more on the police response, we are joined by Brian Higgins. He is the former police chief uh, of... He is the former police chief of the Bergen County, New Jersey Police Department, where he also commanded a SWAT team. He is currently president of the security consulting firm Group 77. Good morning. Thanks for being here. First, I just want to get your key takeaways from yesterday's press conference with DPS. So the, the short answer to that is there are a lot more questions than answers after that press conference. That's number one. Uh, but let's uh, put ourselves in that current environment. The uh, the community is is uh, dealing with a horrific loss, and they have to deal with that right now. And it's probably very difficult to interview people uh, during this time. Uh, but there are a lot of questions that still need to be answered. Was there anything that surprised you when you heard the press conference yesterday? So the, the changing timeline, uh, usually law enforcement doesn't release timeline um, until it's been confirmed. Uh, so that's one issue. Uh, the fact that the sh shooter may have, and we still don't have a definitive am answer from Texas DPS, uh, he may have entered through an unlocked door. Uh, so that's that's a question that needs to be answered. And the timeline when uh, the officers first engaged the shooter and that hour lapsed, we need a lot of information. And you're a former uh, police chief. You're a former SWAT team uh, officer commander. How would you rate the response to this active shooter situation based on what we know so far? Because, of course, it's always easy, you know, to look back and criticize what happened at the time. But based on your expertise, what do you think? So the initial response seems, seems to be very timely. And officers did enter very quickly. And they did engage the, the shooter very quickly. So, so that appears to be a very good response by law enforcement. I think the question everybody's focusing on is once officers engage the shooter and they could not, for whatever reason, enter the room, uh, what was happening during that hour? And, and we really need to know that. Remember, in active shooter situations, time is of the essence. Police officers are taught to go in and engage the shooter immediately. The goal is to stop the person from pulling the trigger. But once that situation turns from active shooting to what we have here, it's a, it's a barricade and or a hostage situation. Then those tactics take over again. How long do you think this investigation into what happened and also the response from law enforcement might take? Well, uh, one, it, it needs to be continuing right now. They can't wait. They can't wait 90 days or more, which I've seen in the past in other locations. They need to continue this investigation now. Um, I think the community needs to get through this time of grieving. They have to address all of their victims, the families, uh, but we need we need timeline um, and and full information in as quick a time as possible. Not because it's going to bring anyone back, but we know that we can anticipate more shootings and we want to prevent anything like this happening again. And, you know, everyone comes out of the woodwork with solutions, right? Or their perceived solutions every time something like this happens. There's a lot of talk about arming teachers and having armed guards in schools. Those are two separate things. Are those good ideas? Look, I think we need to look at everything. We put everything on the table. But if it's true that this door was unlocked, then any measure we put in place, if it's not fully functional at the time of, of a shooting, then none of it will ever help. All right, Brian Higgins, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.